family. I've got nine grandkids, four beautiful children, and, uh, and their spouses now. And uh, <laughs> you don't have what we have. And that's why we're here. We're not here to say what you can do. We're here to say, here's what we've done. And some of you, not all of you, are going to have what we have. Some of you are not going to be converted. I'm here to convert you. Because mm. you're not converted. Even if you're in Primarica. Well, I'm in Primarica. But no, you're not converted yet. Because the indoctrination is deep and strong. Just take a look at America. And how the bad side's converting people. To their way of thinking. And their way of living. And you go, this is not the... What, what happened to our country? They got converted. Because if you listen to the wrong things long enough, you end up being on the wrong side. And I wanna, by the way, I want to uh, recognize a bunch of people here today that have made our hierarchies what it is in Chicago. You know, I had lunch, breakfast with Larry Davidson, who was the beginning guy here in, uh, in Chicago many, many, many years ago. Yeah. They, they retired now. You know, Bill Mitchell in a nursing home. Mm. So be praying for he, uh, his family and uh, uh, Sarah, you know, and you don't go to a nursing home to get better. Yeah. Hmm. And so he's struggling there. But, you know, if it weren't for Bill, there wouldn't be a Larry. If it weren't for Larry, there wouldn't be a Chicago. Right. And then we have guys like Bob Richardson, and um, I'm going to miss somebody apparently. I, I'm sorry. And Danny Blankson, and of course, uh, uh, Emmy and Dan, right over here. And then we have... Uh, um, uh, Army, who just lost Mark a few a while ago, and you know, isn't it wonderful? We have th this is your family. Right. When I worked at the steel company, you were my family, and then of course we have Raul and uh, um, Eugenio, and then we have uh, Carlito, who helped us a lot putting this together. Thank you very much, Carlito, and uh, of course uh, Asa, who you know. Mm -hmm. Assad, I don't know what's wrong with the company, yeah. but he is the hidden gem that right. they don't call on ever. Yeah, that's right. And it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know because uh, I guess, you know, I, I'm going to start a whole group in primary. We've got AALC, we've got Hispanic. I'm going to start DAG. <laughs> Great <laughs> <and> geriatric group. <laughs> And we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> then maybe you know that you speak at the meeting. <laughs> something? Yeah. yeah. I don't get it. And I talk to him about it aside. I don't get it. But all you can do, and I can have a relative up there that won't even return my call. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to convert you from um, uh, an olive, by the way. An olive, but. Day in October, wasn't it? August. August. Wow, I remember going. With you. Wow, and uh, and he and his wife Louisa created everything that's here right now. Basically, I would say, yeah, came from them. Woo! And uh, we got a guy out in California with his wife Leo. Natalie Songkin makes over almost four hundred thousand dollars a year yeah. retired. I love it. Yeah. Uh, all of you folks. And he <laughs> will not leave California. Uh, life is too good. Yeah. Amen. See, yeah. this is the life we want for you. Yes. The only thing you can do to refuse is refuse it. Because you've been indoctrinated into a way of life that doesn't work. And you can't get out. <coughs> they say the difference between a rut and, and a grave is just a, a rut, a grave with the ends knocked out. And you're in a rut put there when you're five and six years old by an educational system that trains you to get a job, mm. have a job, you gotta get a good job. And then some of you went to grade school, and I wasn't good, I'm from the south side of Chicago. I went to Lindblom High School, and everyone here was a school called Lindblom High School. And they indoctrinated me to be a worker guy, right? I had to be a worker bee. Work for somebody, and be a good worker, and a hard worker, and, and I'll have a, a salary, where it means, I had a guaranteed paycheck, which isn't the truth. Mm. And, and then taught by teachers who hate their jobs. Yeah. 
who had parents who hated their jobs, who were taught by people that hated their jobs. I stood in front of a, a thousand people three years ago in, in Orlando, Florida, just before the, the COVID struck. Isn't that funny how five or six guys control our lives? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Five or six people in this country control all our lives. Isn't that right. Same. We got a guy in Dallas, he's a judge, he said, okay, all businesses shut down. What, 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 all right. He got his paycheck. Right. <laughs> but see, we take, we, we, we live our life, oh, okay, okay, boss. Mm. And then when some of us go to high school, and like me, I want good science and math. If you're not good in science and math, you're tolerated. Yes. Tito. Yes. All right. And they love the science and math kids because they're smart. And they got this thing called STEM program and money for STEM. And then, then, then they send you to college and then what? They load you up with debt to make sure you can never get out. We go, oh, okay. And then they yell to the government. The government said, well, we'll pay off some of your students. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> they didn't work nights and weekends because I tried to recruit all those suckers mm. and they went, well, didn't want to do anything. Mm. They're too smart to be in our business. Mm. And then they want me to pay off their student loans. Mm. The insanity goes on. Why? Right? Because the indoctrination is there. Mm. Good job, good education. Education always pays. No, it doesn't. That's right. I know somebody that spent $160,000 on an education and they're, in, and they're making third grade, they're a third grade teacher. Mm. Now they got $160,000 student loans. Mm. See, that's what your children are being trained and educated to do. Not purposely, but that's just the way it is in society. And so the indoctrination of all of you is so deep. I can just see it in your face. Sounds good. All he said, brilliant. And he's right. And we got proof all around the success we're having, the money we've made. But you know what? I got a good job, good benefits. And you're going to go the rest of your life in a low level of misery. It doesn't work. And as soon as you start realizing that and turn your back and get converted, to the life that we're talking about. Yes, we're here to convert you because your job is like a whole life policy. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Life policy okay. or infinity life oh. banking. Yeah. You're like a CD paying a half a percent and we got to get you out of that. Oh, yeah. And some of you won't. Well, we're going to see you down the road. <laughs> Every time we see you, I'm about the job going. <laughs> and then you're going to cower and say, well, between me, my wife, and my son's paper route, we're doing good. Wow. <laughs> How are you doing with that fifty, sixty thousand dollars student loans that they, they told you to get? And I could not work at a school. I could not teach at a university. How can I look at my students and say, I'm loading them up with debt, teaching them a subject they'll never use, like a language. <laughs> Anybody ever take a language? <laughs> you ever use it? <laughs> oh, I have to take it. Why? Because that's what they get paid to do in college. Have I mean, you ever take algebra? <laughs> Ever needed it? <laughs> You have to understand, my, my background is like everybody in this room. I don't come from a success background. You know, nothing. Because my parents didn't have college degrees. They did, uh, you know, they're both factory workers. My mom and dad both worked in factories. And all they knew, I, you know, I was telling the guy the other day, I was 16 years old before I realized Jim B wasn't my uncle. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, 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 you are an hourly worker. It's so funny. Years ago, my dad came to a meeting like this, and uh, he was stunned. And, and, he, and he came up and said, "How much you make an hour?" Isn't that something? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a clue? But see, that's the lowest scale. How much are you going to pay me this hour? The next highest. Which one are you? That's how much you're going to pay me this week. The next one is what? Well, how much you make a month? You ask most of us, what do you make? I don't want to make about 80000 a year. I'm not brought it down to a month. Us, it's what? What's your net worth? Mm. Wow. Mm. You don't talk to people like us and ask us how much we make. We think, well, I know what I kind of make because my net worth is going up. That's what I'm looking at all the time. I don't look at my pay statement. I look at my net worth. As an example, Asad, what does milk cost? What does gas cost? What do you pay on your electric bill? What do you pay on your gas bill? What you see, he doesn't know. Don't you that's the life we want you to have. What did it cost this lie here? I don't know. You got the point? What's it cost you and your family at the last vacation? I don't know. <laughs> We went on a family thing last year, the whole week. 18 of us down to Universal Studios. That's awesome. All expenses paid. Someone said, what'd that cost? I have no idea. I, th I did think, I think around 72,000, something like that. Mm. From the week. You see, don't you want to get to the light where you don't know what things cost? Mm. Yeah. You do it because Amen. you want it, or you do it because you want to do it, or you do it. We just finished doing uh, our bathroom in our, in our lake house. Someone said, what did it cost? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. It cost what it cost. I never asked my wife. She just wrote the check. She probably knows what stuff costs, because that's what she wanted. I never said, that's a little too expensive. What's the last time you said, cut back, slow down. we got to start saving some money. That's what America tells you to do. That's what your, your job tells you to do. Try to fit in this life that you want in the paycheck that you have. And, and live happily ever after. Aren't you tired of it? Aren't you sick of it? Yes. See, you got to be like a bum on the street. You're sick of it. You don't want to live like that anymore. Then all of this starts making sense. But if not, you know, you're doing pretty good. Does your wife work yet? Does she want to? No. No. Then why does she have to? Well, we got bills to pay. I sat down with a couple one day and I said, you know, she started, I started talking about the opportunity and she said, no matter how much money my husband makes, I'll still work. I said, what if you made a quarter of a million years? She said, I'd quit tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Hear me. No wife wants to work. <laughs> They're working because you are forcing them to. No child wants to take out student loans. They're being forced to because the parents didn't make enough money. And are asking me to pay for it. You're rich, you can pay for it with more taxes. No, I don't want to do that anymore, thank you. I'm not spoken about that crap, right? And one day you will be too. That's right. In fact, you don't even know how much taxes you pay. Mm. I pay about $500,000 a year in taxes. Mm. I think I have the right to say, that's okay, right. that's kind of enough, right? right? Right. Versus let him pay for it. No, no. See, you're not making enough money. Mm. That's right to start complaining about taxes. One day you will, and you'll say, you know, that guy was right. That's right. Here's the point. What kind of life do you want from this day forward? Because you're gonna have it and it's coming quick. Understand that the company that you started with paid its dues to have you have the opportunity you have today. What Primerica is today is not what we created. Primerica to be. It's not. Primerica is a financial services company. We did not create all this to create a financial services company. 
You know, you, I, I finished this book about four or five months ago. It's an all-time not bestseller. It's called Art Williams, The Phenomenon, right? And I interviewed Art Williams 30 times. No one's reading it. No one is reading it. Why? They don't want to know about history of our company. But you've got to know. Art Williams' message is dying as we speak. If we keep this up 12 to 15 years from now, it, it'll be gone. Right. And we'll become just another company, just like everybody else. I heard somebody the other day say, we're, we're, we're going to rebrand Primerica. Hmm. You know what that means? And who said it? A person that came in from another corporation that was, was not growing up here. Hmm. That's what we're fighting. Did you know that 11 times our way was put his head down on a pillow knowing it was over? Mm. If, you better know that stuff because if not, you won't appreciate what you have here. That's right. This thing should not exist. When we were at Waddell and Reed, our former company, 19 of us were ready to become what we call today RVPs. I was one of them. And, 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 and Waddell and Reed came up and said, Artie can only promote two this year. But I got 19, got sorry. He was dictated to how many people could be promoted. Now, what about next year? He said, well, we don't know. We'll let you know next year. Maybe not. We don't know. And so we're being held back in our lives because some people at Juan El Rey had a small vision. So February the 10th of 1977, he said, I can no longer look you in the eye and say your future is, is up for grabs. We don't know. We got to give an opportunity for anybody who wants to. So February the tenth, what happened? The RVP culture was created. You're here to become an RVP and have RVPs who have RVP. You're not here to get Series 65. You're not here to get a mortgage license. You're not here to run a sales operation. You're not here to listen to wholesalers who are trying to get you to stop recruiting and being and creating RVPs. Every time you let a wholesaler in your office, guess what? You take steps backwards. Why? They're trying to stop you from recruiting. Why? Because you work for them. Did you know that? Anybody know a wholesaler? You work for them. And they're trying to get you to stop recruiting and start selling their products. They don't care about recruiting an RVPs. Why? Because they override you. That's why. But they never tell us to recruit. Can you imagine? Think about this for a second. We'll let you know if you can never be an RVP. Right now, some of you are saying, well, I'll be an RVP when I darn well please be an RVP. I'll get back to you, Assad, and when I'm ready, I'll go for RVP. But it better be there when I'm ready. That's how most of you are treating me. Can you imagine Monday morning going up to a bank in downtown Gurney or downtown wherever you are, right? And saying, uh, banker, I need a $20 million line of credit to keep my business going. You ever had to do that? Have you ever had to do that? Have you ever had to do that? No, no. no. Art Williams had to. Whoa. And three times we had a deal going and we ran them out of money and then what? We had no more money. Hmm. 11 times. We ran companies out of money. You think, well, I, I can build as much as I want, right? Okay, go get a thousand life apps a month in the next year. Can you do it? Would you want to do that? You know, that's what? About $10 million a month in compensation. Or whatever that is, right? A million dollars a month. So you got to go to a bank and get, what, $12, $15 million line of credit. Do you have to do that, Eugene? No. None of you have to do that. Do you understand what you got a hold of here? You got a bank in Georgia called Primerica. Then what? Be as big as you want. We'll fund it all. And, and you never have to worry about anything. We'll, we'll, all the money's there. We started a company in 77, in 19, and no one wants to read about our history. Why? That's old school stuff. Mm. I want to find out what the hell Mario's doing. <laughs> we say, don't listen to Mario. Don't listen to him. Why? He's not Art Williams. And Mario is listening to Art Williams. There's only one person you got to listen to in this company. 
aren't we? You know why? He took 85 people, listen to this now, and turned it into 250,000 code numbers in 12 years. Let me explain that to you. 85 to 250,000. How many code numbers do you think you'll have in uh, uh, 12 years there, Eugenio? Mm. That's like taking 130,000 today, 130,000 code numbers, and in 12 years, having 250 million code numbers? Right. Wow. Not impressed yet? <laughs> Art William did that. He, he mortgaged his home three times mm. to keep this thing going. Think about that. All for who? who? You. You weren't even born yet, some of you. Well, we forget what, what, the, what, what somebody paid a heck of a price for you to be sitting here right now, listening, and saying you can be all you want to be. Don't listen to Oprah. <laughs> you know, reach for the stars, moon, and hit the stars. <laughs> Where, Oprah? Where? Right. Amazon. What company? Where, where can I go? Right. right. Get a great education. Get extra degrees. Borrow all the money you can. And then what? Have a dream. Have a big dream. They have all these wonderful things. But where are you going to get it? Now you walk in that door. We're saying, okay, now, now you're here. But you know what you got to do? You can't put old, new wine into old wine skin. That's right. That's right. Even some of the old timers, you've got the old wine skin. As long as you're still alive, God's got, God's got something for you to do. You, when are you going to retire, Bill? Please. If you can find a word in the, in the Bible that says retirement, I'll maybe do it. There is no word. Because when you retire, you stop serving God. Amen. God created you to what? To serve Him by doing what? Making other people's lives better. You see, the problem is you're trying to make your life better without making anybody else's life better. Mm. Understand, you're here to be an RVP and create RVPs. Well, so if, you're, if you are still only an RVP a year or two from now and don't have any RVPs, you don't get it. You're in the wrong business. If you're an RVP, I challenge you next year and have to be a senior regional vice president. And then become a, a national and, and have 18 first generation RVPs. Then maybe talk about slowing down. Because the way you get RVPs is what? The replacement. If you're not fighting to be an RVP, if you're not walking up your upline saying, I'm going RVP, I'm going to do whatever it takes for RVP, get out of my way, just let me be an RVP, right? You're not even thinking RVP. Mm. You're thinking Mahamar, <laughs> getting a neat uh, iPad from Vivint. <laughs> Boom. T-shirt at the next convention. Points. Do you understand that point thing? Do you understand? Or worse than this, getting a golf shirt from a, from a wholesaler. <laughs> This is the truth. We were in we're Broadmoor, and I was with Kevin Zirk. And I think you were there with us. Yes. Yep. And, and I said, would you like to have dinner with Carol and me tonight? He looked at me. His face got ashen. He said, well, I'm going out to dinner with the wholesaler. Ooh. We've got $5.2 billion in assets under management. I don't have a golf shirt. I don't have a, 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 a golf ball. I, I, I never get invited out to dinner. Do you? <laughs> we don't get invited to those great trips they take where they wine you and dine you. We're not on any conference calls. There are any conference calls except that one on your seat and circle of chin. <laughs> Misplaced priorities. We're our, all we think is RVP and RVP to be. Art William said there's two positions in primary, RVP and RVP what? Mm -hmm. Training. Can we pull up that first uh, photo? Mm -hmm. This is Carol when she was pregnant with our third child. We're moving out of our home 
I was about to be promoted to RVP, and uh, it's our son Patrick, who is now an RVP, and a little dog, Georgie Girl, who just one of our favorite dogs in the world. And then my daughter, Air, uh, Catherine, who's now got three children, lives in Fort Worth. We're going to a hotel, I'm in a hotel apartment, for a month, until she had our baby, Aaron. And then six weeks to the day Aaron was born, this incredible woman and I moved to Dallas, Texas, we didn't know anybody. Mm. That's what you're gonna have to do if you wanna go RVP. You're gonna have to move out of this city into a place where you don't know anybody and leave everybody you can build behind and start all over again. Kind of weak in the knees, aren't you? <laughs> See, you don't have to do that, do you? You don't have to do that. That's what we had to do in the early days, so you have the opportunity. Because I did that, I recruited Bill Mitchell, who recruited Larry Davidson, who recruited blah, 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 Norman Longit, and all the rest of the history. Someone's going to have to make some sacrifices in your life if you want a better life. Thank you. In the early days, we had to leave because of the insurance wars in Georgia. And we got to remember that when you're ready, we're ready. You know, success doesn't come from where you think it comes from. The founder of McDonald's, Ray Kroc, says success doesn't come from where you think it comes from. We're all lied to. I'm, I really believe this, we're lie, lie after lie. This, the world's full of lies. Because they lie to you. Why? Because what? It serves their ends. And know what the lie is? Hard work's the answer. Education's the answer. Being a good employee is the answer, right? No, Ray Kroc said, none of that's the answer. It's by being at the right place, at the right time, with the right opportunity. You know, we, we saw this thing called the most trusted company, right? Yeah, change that. To most trusted system. Our system is what you ought to trust. Having Primerica, the most trusted company, has it made you any sales? Has it allowed you to recruit any people? Because we built this with the most untrusted company in America called A.L. Williams. Every insurance company hated us. Every insurance commissioner hated us. Every better business bureau hated us. Un untrustworthy in, in the minds of America, and we built our company from 85 people to a quarter million, because what? We allow you to become an RVP and have RVPs and be financially independent so nobody's got their thumb on you. Right. Go up to your boss on Monday if you have the courage. Say, Mr. Don't you hate that boss? Hey, Mark. <laughs> There's two things I got into. When I got in the Army, I wanted out. When I got into an apartment, I wanted out. And when I had a job, I wanted out. How bad do you want out? Because, mm. you know, I'm talking to the choir here. The people who don't want out didn't come today. Because I can ask you to raise your hand if you had someone who's supposed to be here today. <laughs> didn't show up. Right. Why? The indoctrination has shackled them. And they think it's going to get better. Why? Because it can't get any worse. And they live their life as a low level of misery, and they'll be to eight to 12 jobs in their life. We're the most trusted system. Ask your boss on Monday, boss, what do I have to do to make $200,000 a year? Just tell me and I'll do it. Unless you have the courage to do it, why in the heck are you going to work Monday? You know what they're gonna pay you, just enough so you won't quit, and you're gonna work just hard enough so they don't fire you. Ask your boss, boss man, what do I have to do to own this thing one day? Just ask him, why in the world would you go someplace where you don't have unlimited income? A secure income like we're talking about here. How come your company isn't having meetings like this for your kids' employees? And when, when can you ever own it? You know, we, we talk about renting versus owning. We understand that in the house. But why is it our lives don't take precedent over a house? It's okay, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna rent an apartment, but it's okay if I rent my life. Mm. You have nothing to show for it. Boy, I got a rude awakening when I left the steel company. 
I used to work for. Isn't that amazing? I used to, intolerable. A job intolerable. 60 to 70 percent of school teachers, by the way, want out. 60 percent of the of police officers want out, and you can't blame them. Good luck on that one when they all leave. Now we get a call. <laughs> right? The philosophers, they have philosophies, right? <laughs> and I went into my, my bedroom, or my closet, where I had all these old paycheck stubs. And I swore when I picked up all the old paycheck stubs, seven years of paychecks, I kept them. I don't know why. Never again am I ever going to do anything where I don't get paid forever on what I do. Forever. Do you understand that your family, Assad, will be getting money for the next 100 years? See, you, it's hard to hear this because you've never been talked to like this. This is an adult conversation. An adult. You're an adult. Why in the heck would you work for something hard that may not be here a year from now? Or two years? Or they walk in one day and say, you're too old. You want to talk about discrimination in America? Try aging. You wouldn't want a 90-year-old plumber coming into your house, would you? Age discrimination. You see, it's natural. The point is, though, folks, when you get older, you're not, they don't want you anymore. And then one day, what? You're gone, and they say every reason why, and they get rid of you. And you, but, but you say, but I gave 15 to 20 years of my life to this thing. You're right. Didn't work, did it? No. It didn't work for me either. I'm here to convert you to a life that Assad was talking about. And how do we do it? We go to page 7 of the locker room notes. If you've got a book called Locker Room Notes, I'm not going to explain what that is. If you don't have it, too bad. Right? <laughs> it's, it's all Art Williams. Pure Art Williams and what Art Williams said quoting Art Williams. Yeah. And on page seven, guess what he said? You only grow through something called multiplication. You see, in your mind, it, it, interesting, all the uh, uh, new branding people that want to come in, I, I know her name and I'm so angry at her because she doesn't know what the heck she's talking about. And she came in from another company and said, we're going to rebrand Primerica into what? Into her understanding of what we should be. But that's not what we are. Because why? Their attitude is we don't need more people. We need to get more out of the people we have. You ever hear that? That's rebranding us to become financial analysts. Let me tell you the statistics on financial analysts. 18% leave the industry every year. They can't keep them. Why? Because they got a prospect and you don't like it. They don't know how to prospect. We don't like the prospect either. That's why we recruit. Art Williams says what? We found a better way to make a sale. How do we get sales? We recruit somebody. You know, we left this morning at 6.30. Manny was so nice to pick me up. My sister lives in Mokina, way on the south side. I spent the last couple days with her watching nothing but news. <laughs> Rachel Ray, thank God for Rachel Ray. They said, no one got killed on Rachel Ray. Think about this. They said, man, you're going 90. I, I, anyway. Because this way, Bob was a little scared. 70, 80 miles an hour for an hour and a half nonstop, nothing but city and people. Right. Mm. Nothing but every, as far as the eye can see. Think of it, who else but us? Who? Think of, let's go through the scenario, right? What the heck are banks doing for people? Either getting you to borrow money and sticking it to you. I love what, what Dave Ramsey said. MasterCard. What? Everyone needs a MasterCard because what? You get enslaved to debt and every slave needs a master. <laughs> Are the credit card companies helping you? What about the banks? What are banks doing? They, let's go through it. Let's look at the world out there. Let, how about credit unions? Stockbrokers? 
Insurance people, which you can't even find anyone to sell insurance anymore. They, they don't exist. No one sells life insurance anymore. 70 miles an hour for an hour and a half, nothing but people, and there's only one answer to all their financial problems, not Primerica, it's you. Hmm. And the number of people that you have out there helping people. How much more do you want? How much better do you want it to be? This is a free enterprise system. They're trying to do away with capitalism in America. Who? Oh, the brain head, dumb heads, right? And all that, that doesn't work, you know why? Because they, they, they have student loans, they want someone to pay them off. Right? Here's the point. It can't get any better than this for you. This is the quickest, easiest, fastest way to get wealthy in America. Woo! Well, Bill, it's not quick, fast, or easy. Right? It's the quickest, fast, and easy you'll ever find. I went to Dallas, Texas in August 1st of that year. <coughs> My first month I recruited 10 people direct. If you want to know how, you haven't been listening to my training, any of our trainings. Do you, listen, listen, well, what do you do your first month? This is so interesting to me, because some people are asking, I can see it in your face right now. What do you do? All right, am I right? What do you do? Think. Think. So we don't think. In March of that year, I knew I was coming to moving someplace, and I chose Dallas, right? I had never been here, didn't know anybody. Guess what I did for the next five months? Who do you know in Dallas Fort Worth? Who do you know in Dallas Fort Worth? Who do you know? I came here with 200 names, duh. <laughs> and these financial analysts leave the industry because they don't have anybody to talk to. What's the reason you recruit somebody? To get their market. Yeah, we don't do it, do we? We don't get people's markets. Why? Well, I don't want to offend them. Please. That's your pay for giving them great value. So that's what this in August, January to January. I made $180,000 as an RVP. You make a heck of a lot of money as an RVP. You don't want to be anything but an RVP. RVP is a place to be. We hear that. You're losing so much money being, not being an RVP. The following year, 240. Following year, 300,000. My 10th year in the business, I became a cash millionaire. <clears throat> Quickest, fastest, easiest, best way to get wealthy is right here with the RVP contract. Now, you know, now it's a matter of do you want it or don't you? And we'll see some of you on the road. We'll see some of you in the mall. We'll, some, we'll see you and you knock your head. Because why? You chose the indoctrination over what God really had planned for you. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You know, we can talk a little bit later about Jeremiah 29 11. <laughs> That's a joke. I love talking to Christian people. I love talking because they believe everything and they know nothing. <laughs> right? You believe Jeremiah 29 11? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I have plans for you. Okay. What's his plan? They go, huh? <laughs> What's his plan for you? Work at a job <laughs> that you hate, that you're miserable in, that your wife has to work, that your kids have to take student loans out, they have twenty-five thousand dollars of credit card debt, to rob Peter, to pay Paul, and keep out in existence, to love Fridays and hate Mondays. Is that God's plan for you? No. Yet yeah, Christian people are going out. God's got a plan for me. Here my twenty eleven. I, I, I was in San Antonio and I saw this girl with the, you know, Jeremiah 29 book notebook. And I said, you really believe that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How many people did you recruit last month? Mm. None. I said, was that God's plan for you last month to recruit no people? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Christian people wear me out. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a child of the sheep. Who do you drive it? How much debt do you have? Who'd you vote for last year? Why? Well, he'll take care of me. He'll pay me, pay off my student loans. You don't need God, you've got the government. 
<laughs> See, we got I, I think God, I got a good job. Oh my God. Hmm. I don't need. I don't need God and my wife to get two more jobs. <laughs> my kids can get student loans. I got an extra credit card I can use. Hmm. Hey, if you use the credit card for Christmas, then you, that's not God's plan. Hmm. How much debt does God want you to have? How much? Zero. Zero. And how much do you have? Zero. So when you go to church tomorrow, <laughs> Some of you might not understand, but as uh, Desi said to Lucy, you got some explaining to do. <laughs> some of you might not get that. We're, we're showing our age here, right? <laughs> All right, what's Art's plan? Art's plan is for you to take advantage of this. Can you show up to the next one, please? Hmm. This is all spiritual. Come a combine harvest. We were in uh, Idaho, and we went fly fishing with my. I love I love doing anything with my kids, fly fishing and hunting. Anything. I don't do it by myself, but I'll do it with them. Golfing, anything. And uh, the guy said they're driving down the road. We had about a 25 mile drive. He said, look to your right, look to your left. This road, and you can actually smell the potato. He said, as far as the eye can see, for 25 miles, that's all McDonald's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, what would you do if you say, that, that, that's, that's, I'm supposed to harvest all that myself. God gave me all that my, to me and my family for the next 100 years. Mm -hmm. And every year it's going to be replanted. And I don't have to do any of the planting. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have to do any of the planting. All you gotta do is harvest. We're here to harvest. No one has any life insurance. We're harvesting that. They got 401k rolls. We're harvesting that. They don't have IRAs. We're harvesting that. When's this gonna stop? If you folks stop having children, it may slow down, but I can tell some of you folks are gonna continue to have children. <laughs> it's never gonna end. When we started in the company, there were 40 million 30 year olds that were married. 40 million 30 year olds. Today, there's 62 million 30-year-olds mm. married. <laughs> Got up 50%, and, and we drive 70 miles an hour for an hour and a half, all these people, and none of them have insurance, and none of them have mutual funds, and, and, and they hate their jobs, right? And they need to be converted, and you didn't recruit anybody last month. I can take next one, please. <laughs> you can either <laughs> harvest with a lawnmower, or some of you may not know that that's called a combine harvest. <laughs> it's about as big as this stage. Yeah. Cost millions of dollars. Run all on computer. Right? What are you going to harvest it with? Well, I can do it myself, right? I got my Series 65. I got my life insurance. I can make some sales. I can make some money. I can roll over some money. That's not God's plan. God's plan is not to be solo. What did he say to the 11 disciples? Do what? Go into all the world and what? Multiply. And make disciples, not recruit them. A disciple isn't a disciple until they have a disciple. Why? Because, and he said, the whole world? Folks, I've been to Israel. You've been to Israel. You've been in Israel? I mean, the whole world, these guys never went more than 90 miles from, from, from Galilee down to Jerusalem. That was it. 90 miles. They didn't know the world. What's the world? What's the world? But that's what he gave them. And guess what happened? Guess what happened? Next one, please. We, our market is 100 miles wide, 100 miles deep. It's waiting to be harvested. What are you going to do about it? How many people did you recruit last month? None. Just so, just you. You've got that lawnmower. You're going to get some, right? Now let me ask you a question. Is what you're doing going to last a hundred years? Oh no, it's only going to last until I die. We had a guy come to our house who was doing some of the remodeling because he was recommended to us because he built things that last a hundred years. Is what you're doing in your life going to last a hundred years or until the day you die or until next faith period? The purpose of life isn't to live forever, but to create and build something that does. 
Are you, are you just finding enough for you and your family? I'm guessing the harvest enough for me and my family. But what about the other people and their family? I just have to take care of me and mine. Mm. Christian people that don't could wear me out. Why? They just think of themselves. Why? I don't need to recruit anybody. I, I, I'm, I'm doing good. I, between me and my wife and my kids' paycheck, we're doing pretty good. Mm. That's not the multiplication on page seven. Next one, please. Imagine looking to your left and right and, and, and your hierarchy overriding combine just raking in the wealth. See, you want to be talking to fat about those filthy, rich people. <laughs> They're greedy, no good, rich people. And who tells you that? Politicians yeah. who get filthy rich telling you how bad the filthy, rich people are. <laughs> God becomes president of the United States, eight years serving the public. He's now worth 200 million. How can this be? <laughs> right? But that's how they get rich. Vote for me and I'll, I'll soak it to those rich people. Well, I like them talking to me like that. They, they don't like me, they hate me. Why? Because what? He got it easy. <laughs> You're right. You know how many Saturdays I've worked? last 40 some years? How many nights I've worked? Got the point? Mm. And the point is, I don't have to. I get the privilege of doing it. Mm. If not, folks, this thing's going to die. If people like me are not here talking like this. It's going to die. And then nothing will be left for anybody out there except wholesalers up here. who are trying to get more out of you. And then one day what? There's not going to be anybody to talk to because they're all dead, dead and gone. Next one, please. John 4, 38. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. You didn't work for any of this. Let me take a little clue. 70% of our securities business today, mutual fund business, where are they getting it from? All our old clients and recruits for all these years that we put into IRAs yep. or we started a mutual fund with or made them an insurance client. So if we hadn't done that, we wouldn't have all the people making all the securities business money. Look at all the money I'm making in security because of all the work that was done before. All that, the, the, from 85 to 250,000 in 12 years who had children and had been became clients, you didn't create any of it. You're just harvesting it. So will you. You understand? I can understand it. You gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta go out there and train them, and then wait twenty years. No, you're you're harvesters, not salespeople. You're just, you're just gathering all you want. How much do you want? Next one, please. Do it around. This is one I love. Stock with goods you did not produce, cisterns you did not dig, you leave from vineyards you did not plant. Mm. And when you have eaten, be careful that you don't forget the Lord. Folks, we've forgotten what this is, the Lord, and he gave us all this. When I got the industry, there's a bunch of whole life out there. I didn't sell them any, right? You see a whole life policy, what would you do to get them all? Nothing. Someone else did it. You're harvesting. You sit down with someone, you've got $100,000 in a CD. What are you doing? Moving them. You didn't get them to put that money in the CD, right? You didn't do anything to get a guy to hate their jobs. Corporate America, all the layoffs, everything else, you didn't do anything. You're just harvesting. Next one, please. And, and, and uh, so I talked about this, the great wall of wealth. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. $68 trillion come the next 30, 35 years. Hmm. A trillion dollars, imagine a city with only million dollar houses. A million, a million, million dollar houses, that's a trillion. And there's 68 trillion moving. And how many securities licensed people do you have? Well, I got my license and I got two other guys. Don't you want to share this with other people? Don't you want to let them know this exists? The reason I did the Wall of Wealth about 18 years ago What's to let to recruit people into this? Guess what people that didn't recruit people? 
They just sat around and now they're just moving the money, moving the money, making a lot of money, moving the money, but they're not recruiting anybody. I get, they're not sharing it with other people. And 85% of employees hate their jobs. This is not me. You think I hate my job, but everyone loves theirs. Oh, I know a guy, he loves his job. You show me a guy that loves his job, I'll show you to the wife he's married to that hates hers. And he makes her go to work so he can enjoy his job. And you know what? About 85% of people that like their jobs, they got a good boss. But wait, that's going to turn. <laughs> You're going to have a bad boss one day. Wait, I'm going to show you some statistics a little bit. Next one, please. And the results show that a staggering 85% of workers in the world say they hate their jobs. I'm not making this up. This is from a book. They don't like their job. They say they hate them. And we don't want to prove anybody. 85% of the people in your cell phone hate their job to dread to go work Monday morning. You know what everyone loves in this country? Wednesday by 5 o'clock. You know what they hate? Next Sunday at, at 7 o'clock. And we're recruiting nobody. Got the point. They hate their job. Let me explain hate. They hate. Don't like it. Don't want to do it. I, I ask four questions. Why do you get up and go to work in the morning? I got bills to pay. That's it. Ask these people these four questions. Second thing is, can you see yourself doing what you're doing right now for the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. Guess what they're going to say? No. Third thing, you want your children to grow up and do for a living what you do. No what are they going to say, little? I mean, I'm probably you know, No. Then why are you doing it? I got bills to pay. Jamal Bryan, Pastor Jamal Bryan, who's from Lithonia, Georgia now, said, if you got a job, and you're miserable at your job, that doesn't that means you're not working God's purpose for your life. He's got a purpose for all of us. We say we, we say this all the time, but we allow people to live not in their purpose. Because why? He seemed happy. He looked like I thought he was happy in his job. You got hundred let me show you this. Eighty thousand people were recruited last July in primary. Eighty thousand. Every one of them had 100 names in their cell phone, 85% of which hated their job. You know how many recruited in July? I mean, uh, September, August? 23,000. We went from 80,000 to 23,000. That's called silly recruiting. They don't get 100 names in their cell phone. We didn't call any. We didn't call a one. Well, you fell out of an IPA. Now they're mad at the world because there's this thing called $25 a month is coming out. And they don't remember where supply is coming out. You've done some of that, haven't you? My recommendation, next time they say no cost to join Primerica, don't do it. Make it pay. Because why? It keeps you solid. Next one, please. Wait, what's number four? Why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? Uh, why do you get up? And you get up? Last one is in, goes back to number one, because I got yeah. bills to pay. Why then why are you doing it? Because I got bills to pay. Matthew, and he said, the harvest is plentiful, the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest field. What means what? We are supposed to be recruiters and builders. And I was telling Manny, I heard his pastor talk about how churches are just dropping like flies right now, closing their doors. Yep. Why? Why? Pardon? No one's recruiting. Because the pastor has never been taught how to recruit. He should be calling it. You should be calling your pastor if you need me. You need me to come in to this church and teach people how to recruit and how to multiply. We're going to double the size of this church in a year. Because the pastor gets up there and says, well, God will send them in. You know why the churches grow? Because their vicinity is growing with people. But as soon as their vicinity slows down, the church slows down. Then COVID happens and no one's coming. The pastor goes, well, I just know how to preach the gospel. <laughs> Guess what? If your base shop goes to nothing or no one showing up, you'll start recruiting, won't you? Pastor, maybe you should start recruiting. Huh? I don't know how to They don't know how to recruit, Eugenio. <coughs> they should come to us and say, how do you recruit? How do you multiply? And guess what you're going to teach them? Multiplication. Uh, you're not going to teach them what? One-on-one. -on -one. You get one more and then go get one. You're going to teach them how to take one person, turn them into three, those three into nine, those three into 27. Sounds like our review. Next one, please. 
Who gathers crops in the summer's food, but he who sleeps during the harvest is a disgraceful son. Ooh, does it hurt? Yeah. Your toes didn't step on? Are you sleeping during the harvest? Because he gave us this, folks. Oh, Jeez, we didn't do anything for this. We're just harvesting. Next one, please. Don't recruit invite, you know, recruit people, invite them into this wonderful, wonderful harvesting opportunity. That's all we don't need that anymore. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. What are we used to? Imagine a guy walking down a, 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 a beach. And, he, and, and the young man, there's always a young guy, the smart one. And the old man's always the wise, not too smart, but I like old people jokes. <laughs> Guys yelling, Alexa, Alexa. Wife says, Alexa's in the other room, you're talking to a tuna can. <laughs> and he sees all these starfish, 10,000 starfish, right? You ask anybody this question, and they'll get it wrong because they're trying to rebrand us. They're trying to make us like everybody else. And it doesn't work out there. But that's all they know. They think they're doing us a favor like poor Mary did. We're not trying to, don't recruit more people, get more other people you recruit. Our wing says it's not how you build it. You get more people because people bring friends and friends become clients and you recruit some of the friends, become clients, right? Page seven, lock them in notes. Well, recruit somebody, get them three people. Here, you get them three people. Hear what I just said? Yeah. What don't you understand about you? Well, I'm going to help them get three people. I'm going to sit at that computer and wait for my uh, Zoom calls so that if they get anybody on there, I'll recruit them. How's that work? Does it work? Do your people, when you recruit them, go out and get people? Yeah. No, it doesn't work in churches either. Got the point? Mm, yeah. So like churches are what? Yeah. Going down because I, I, I'm telling my, anybody here ever, ever been recruited by a pastor? All on the street, but pastors sure tell you who's going to do it. But they're not doing it. Mm. Why? It's not, it's, they don't know how to do it. That's not how you recruit. You sit down with somebody, you get their three best friends, and take those three best friends and turn them into not only best friends, and 27, and you take everybody 40. Where would you be today if you took everybody 40? Mm. Absolutely. But, you ever hear that before? Yep. Why don't we do it? Because our vision isn't big enough. Mm. You know, I tell you know redneck redneck jokes. You know, your redneck, redneck if you, you're, you're cutting your grass and you find a car. <laughs> you know, your redneck if your girlfriend's hair gets caught in your ceiling fan. <laughs> you know, you've been in Primerica, right? When you go to a family reunion and take a photo and you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Again, I love this. Put a bow on it. It's been a gift given to you. That's right. This system, this opportunity, 70 miles at 70 miles an hour, all with people who have no one else to go to, no one else recruiting them, no one else talking to them. So the guy's driving, walking down the street, comes up to the uh, the kid uh, throwing a uh, starfish back into the sea one by one, financial <laughs> analyst. <laughs> got, got, got the picture? <laughs> Series 65, got that one, right? Mortgage people, right? Here's your, at least I helped that one, right? Nothing wrong with all that, but you know, there's 10,000 that are dying. And the old man walks up to him, right, and says, what difference are you making? And the man proudly picks one up, throws it into the water, and it says, at least I helped that one. See, we all like that empathy. We all like that, because he cares. See, empathy is feeling for somebody, compassion to do something about it. Mm. The question our Williams had to ask himself, how many do I want to save? You talk about 90 million families out there, right? 90 million. How many do you want to save? How, and you got to make up your mind. I've got a goal by, in the next 40 years of 1 million new clients. 1 million. 10,000 RBPs in a hurry. 
But how else are we gonna get the million clients? Right. How are we gonna save? Do you wanna save a million people? Do you wanna get a million phone calls saying thank God for you? So what, what should that young man be doing? Listen to Art Williams. And do what? Go into town. Stop helping individuals. Not right away. You've got to stop eventually, like I have. Like Assad has. Because why? We're multiplying ourselves amongst people. Instead of help getting tens of clients a month, we're now getting thousands of clients a month. Got the point? Instead of me having 50 million assets on a management, I've got 5.2 billion. Got the point? I multiplied myself, and so many more. I've never 250,000 clients out there. If I stayed just doing 10 clients a month for the last 40 years, guess what? I'd have maybe, I don't know, 1,600, 2,000 clients. I've got 250,000. Got the point? You're meant for something bigger than where you're at. So what does that guy do? He go gets his, what, five friends, right? You've seen this. Have you done fast start school? Okay, I need five people up here, right? And, and, and there's one guy here. I need more information. You've seen that, haven't you? Yeah. More information. And you five go get five. All right? I just need more information. I just need another Series 65. I need another variable annuity class. Right? That, see that difference? You five go get five, you get five. And eventually the whole room is on the stage. <coughs> we sit there and go, huh? I got it. How many times do you see it? Yeah, what are we doing? We're still the same guy over here saying, no, I, I, I got five guys that I'm training. They need to be trained. They got to know what they do. They got to know how to close. They got to know how to present. They got to know how to handle. They got to get series 60, 63, but to handle rollovers. Um, one of the greatest days of my life, series 65 came out, and I said, well, I need a license. Don't ride it. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> mortgage just came out. Do I need a license? Don't write it. No. Oh. I'm good. <laughs> you know how much money a year I make off of uh, PP legal? Twenty-seven thousand dollars a year, prepaid legal. Wow. Have you ever wrote one? And I think I have a license. <laughs> Since I think I have to fill out something. <laughs> Why don't you want? See how? Isn't this sad? We gotta beg. I feel like I'm begging. Oh, jeez. All right? <laughs> so the answer is what? Go get five, we'll get five, we'll get five. Where did we hear that before? Art Williams. Mm. We run an RVP factory. The whole point of life, you've been doctrinated to have 100% income off of one. And you've not moved. Mm. And indoctrination is holding. From grade school, high school, and college, get a career, be a professional, mm. right? Have a, have a degree, get multiple degrees, be good at your profession. Love what you do and you'll never work a day in your life, Oprah says. Oh, really, Oprah? <laughs> <laughs> Oprah doesn't work, she's got old, she's got uh, uh, Rachel working, she's got Dr. Phil working, she's got all these other entities working and she's not working. She didn't tell us to go out there and build multiple streams of income like she's got. Mm, right. Indoctrination. Mm. You know what Warren Buffett said? You must have multiple streams of income. A decision you have to make before you leave here. Are you going to be a lone ranger the rest of your life, 100% off one? Or are you going to have multiple streams of income? If you, I call you in a month, you've not recruited anybody, it's over. Over, you'll forever be stuck with a job because you've not made that fundamental decision. You know, when I was out in the field doing what a lot of people are having to do now until they get there, <laughs> when a guy had a whole life policy, I said to them, I don't care if you become my client. I want to show you a better way a buy term investor difference and show you the power of it. I don't care if you become my client once you make that decision. I just want to help you make that decision. Mm. I didn't care if they became my client. I just said, I want them to say, you're right. I got to get out of this whole life policy. 
If they say, I said to you, and if you say to me, you know, thank you very much, but I'm going to get my business. I'm good with that. I did my job. If you're a Christian and you see a person that's lost spiritually, do you really care if they go to your church or somebody else's church? Well, if they go to church, got the point, like you said today. You didn't say, and you got to go to my church. Here's the name of the church. Fly down to, you know, some Fort Myers and go with them. No, you don't care. See, our job is to get convert people from 100% off one to 1% 1 off 100 people. And I don't care if they join my hierarchy. I don't care if they say, no, you're right. I'm, I'm getting out of this hellhole called a job. But I'm joining in something else. They did my job. Mm. See, once you understand what your role is, it's not to get them to join you or get them primarily. It's to get them out of whole life. Get them out of CDs. Get them out of a job. And then you tell them why you, your system is the best for them. Got the point? Mm. Is that your heart for people? Okay. That's why it's got to be your heart. J. Paul Getty said, instead of having 100% off one, it's better to get what? 1% off a hundred. Before primary, does anybody ever talk to you like that? Which means what? You're indoctrinated 100% off one. That's all you know. You're going to leave here today, and before you get in your car, it'll all, it, 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 you're stuck at your job for another 30 years. Mm. Versus you could have been, have 100, 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 people like we do, overriding them. Art Williams said, nobody wants to sell anything to anybody. Right. Yet we recruit people to try to get them selling. Here's a, here's a man. 5% of people want to sell anything. So you got to talk to 20 people, and, and one might say, yeah, you know, I, 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 can, I can sell this stuff, right? And of the people you recruit, only 8% want to be in financial services. So you got to recruit, like, 100, interview 160 people to get them to come sell financial products. Why? Because it's what? It's not a, a tangible. It's, it's not tangible. It, 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 you know, you can't touch it, feel it. They'll, they'll sell tangibles, but they don't want to sell intangibles. Hmm. He said, but everybody wants to override. Aren't we afraid to talk to people about overriding? Because why? It'll turn them off. Right? Well, I turned off a lot of women in my life. <laughs> I finally turned one on and married her for 54 years. Wow. That's right. <laughs> So who's, who's not married yet? Guys, any guys? You can't find a girl that'll have you, can you? <laughs> we found women that would have us. <laughs> right? By the way, you got you like the better looking girls? That helps. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> sexy like, as uh, a wife. woman named Mae West. That's right. <laughs> When you're in your 20s, you better have looks. When you're 30s, you better have personality. When you're 50s, you better have cash. <laughs> Some of you guys, you, know, you need a lot of cash. <laughs> you have looks. That's the most way you have. Don't tell what you had. School bus. <laughs> the reality is this. Our job is to convert you. Art Williams said, listen to this brilliance now. What we give people here, they cannot get anywhere else on this planet. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Think about that. They can't go anyplace else. Oh, I've heard this before. I can go over here. Unlimited income. Name somebody else that you know of that has an unlimited income outside of primary. I love what one author said. People think you're making a million, uh, you make a billion, you have less problems. No, you, Elon Musk, he's got a lot of problems. Amazon, he's got problems. More money, more problems. Got the point? That's the truth. Because if you make it off any other way, other than way we make our money. Because we have unlimited income, but what? It's secure. It's coming in. Would you want listen to this, listen to these statistics? Here's here's you in the future. You don't believe it? That's gonna happen to me, right? 
You're not going to have any wrinkles. You're not going to have any gray hair. You're always going to have a flat belly, right? <laughs> That's what we all thought. So guys making fun of me because I'm older, I said, yeah, I don't think you're going to make it to my age. <laughs> I'm happy to be my age, frankly, because a lot of people don't make it. 87% of people don't like their job. Almost 90% of people on your cell phone don't like their job. Let me explain that to you. They hate them. Have you called them yet? When you recruit somebody, they got 100 names, 90 of which hate their job, and you don't call any of them? Mm. Well, I'm afraid of turning the guy off. From what? <laughs> From going to PFS shoot this weekend. It's not even for 40 hours, you get a life insurance license, and you're going to turn them on. You get a life insurance license and study for 40 hours and give up a weekend. You're going to like this. You're afraid of turning them off? Got the point? Mm. They're in your cell phones. How many people did you recruit last month in your base? 20. That's 2,000 names. 2,000 names which 1,800 hate their jobs. Now, and you're hoping to recruit 25 this month of the 1,800. Mm. Raul, well, what are we doing? Are we out of our minds? Recruiting all these people with 100 names in their cell phones, 80 for 85, 7% hate their jobs, and we're struggling to recruit? Like I said to the guy, listen, give me your cell phone. I'll call all the people and I'll make about fifty to hundred thousand dollars, but I'll give you hundred dollars for your list right here. Mm. But I'll make fifty hundred thousand off. Or we said you only need three people. Did you ever recruit through your ex? That's all you ever need to recruit. If you don't take that and turn it into a hundred, when's the last time you recruited somebody and with the what what with, with the with the with the decision to take them 100 deep. Wow. Mm. Why don't you take somebody 100 deep? Because I'm trying to get on the PFSU. Because the company says to get code numbers. Don't listen to the company on things that don't regarding recruiting. Oh, well, don't worry about code numbers. <laughs> Go get 100 people and get a lot of code. <laughs> don't get 100 people, a lot of people would buy the product. We're trying to get two people and make them into a, get coded. So I, had, I said, I got two codes. I don't care. I'd rather have you have 10 people than that code number. That's the point. Jeez. Mm -hmm. 50% don't feel satisfied with their job. 25% say a job is the number one stressor. 41% are living paycheck to paycheck. 70% are not motivated. 50% they are woefully underpaid. 57, 67% in the wrong field. And 72% uh, are in a place where they're being undermined so they can't succeed. And they're all in your cell phone right now, and you haven't called any of them. What are you going to do with 1,800 people that ate their jobs in their cell phone and all the other numbers mm. that you recruited last month? Got the point? Mm. You don't need to. <laughs> you got to take, I got 20 last month. That's 2,000 names. That's 1,800. We're going to go crazy. Look out. See? Listen to this, 328 people a day die from stress on the job. So you know, you, people with jobs, like, you're gonna die from stress on the job. Just ask the police officer, ask a, ask a school teacher. They hate their jobs because of the stress. Got the point? Yeah. There are more people die every year from stress from a job then Alzheimer's and diabetes combined. Mm. Yet, uh, uh, where's the national outcry for that one? Well, where's the uh, Stress Job Association of America? <laughs> <laughs> and we don't recruit any of them. Mm. As we shut down now, just remember this. You cannot get these any place else other than here. Time and money. You cannot get these two any place else. Again, why would you want, seriously, convert me to go work at your job. Mm -hmm. And if you're not willing to do it, then you shouldn't be there. We got, here's the indoctrination. 45 year plan. Work for 45 years at eight to 10 jobs of which you don't like any of them or the boss. Number one, Job stressor is boss. 
And if you like your boss, wait, the bad one's coming. Everyone else, anybody here have a bad boss that made your life miserable? Yes. Dress you, he's coming. It's like a bad mother-in-law. Understand. Unlimited income, secure income, but what? More time. Why don't we recruit more people? Because we say you can make more money here. Why is that a problem? They translate that to, yeah, I want to make more money, but I got to give more time. Because why? Everyone has to put more time in to make more money. Here, who works the least in this room? Me. Who works the next least? Asad. Who works not at all? Leo Sonkin. <laughs> and uh, what? The Longy family. Am I right, Alan? Right. When was the last time you were on an appointment? See what I mean? <laughs> Even from the grave. Mm-hmm. Folks, where else? The, a doctor? Lawyer? Mm-hmm. Dentist? You don't want to be those people. You want to be an RVP with RVPs here. We just got to invite people into this incredible world of unlimited income, secure income, more time, and more money. It's, it's staggering how people set their jaws against more time and more money. Yet they complain when they got to work harder. They complain when they don't get any money. Mm. They complain, complain, complain. Because why? Being outraged is, is a hero in America. Being a victim, everyone is a victim. I'm more a victim than you. Mm. Oh, he really had it bad. That's right. But nothing changes. Think about this. If you, all of you in this room are not making at least $200,000 a year in 2024, you have chosen to have 100% off one life. It's your personal choice. Like most problems in America are people's personal choice and the way they live their life, right? If you're not recruiting people this month and going out this month and double digiting this month, through recruiting two or three people and going 4D. And hold your job up, up blind, say what? Preach 4D, and take them 4D, and show them 4D. Because we're not doing that. Because why? How many people have you recruited in the last year to only get 20 last month? How many people this year have you recruited? That's what months, over 300. 300, that's what? 3,000, that's, I'm sorry, yeah, 3,000 names. Mm. Right? No, 30,000 names. Yeah. 30,000 names. You know what I mean? And what are we doing with them? Nothing. Our job, hope that my job is not complete. My heart breaks for you. Some of you need a hug. <laughs> You're so worn out. Let me end on this. You've got to be exhausted. Every day going out there, especially in this kind of weather, you got to go back to work. To a place you don't want to work at, making money you don't particularly care for, coming home, having a few hours to yourself, and then having to go right back at it. You come home Friday night, the weekend, you blink and you're back at it. And it's going to have to do that for the next 40 years. Mm. Folks, you did this for about five years, and then you'll never have to work another day in your life for the next 45, 50, or your family's life, like your family. None of them are having to work. You want them to. But none of them are having to. See, people say, what do I have to do to get money? If you're not money motivated, you're in trouble. Mm. See, why? Because you're not money motivated, you won't make money. And what, you'll always be behind the eight ball when it comes to money. This afternoon, I'll be talking about becoming and getting and staying money motivated. We'll talk to you in a little bit. Mm.